Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and welcome to the next episode in the Coding a 2D Physics Engine in Java series. I know this says Game Engine, but you can ignore that because I use the same notes for both of these series. <laughs> okay, today we're going to be talking about collision manifolds. Now, these are going to be very helpful when we go to resolving collisions. I've been debating about the direction to take this series in and I think the best course is to get one set of shapes completely working with uh, collision resolution, which I'm going to do as two spheres or two circles. And then once we get one completely done, we can sort of go through the process with another two shapes so that you can see what the process looks like for resolving collisions. Because they're mostly the same. You just have to change up how you find these for each shape, the collision manifolds. That's the hardest part. And that's what we're going to be talking about today and circles are definitely the easiest way to find these. Now, what is a collision manifold? It's simply a wrapper around some data to help us out. Collision manifold consists of a collision normal, which I will just call a normal. Since we already know this is part of the collision manifold, we will assume that this is the collision normal. It also consists of the depth of the collision. So how far, how deep is the colliding point happening? And a list of contact points. This could be one or more contact points. If you have two squares colliding, you could have two contact points or four contact points because they have multiple ways. With spheres or circles, you only have one contact point, uh, but we'll discuss that in more depth in a later time. Okay, so we need these three key things, normal, collision normal, depth, and a contact point or list of contact points. And how do we find these? The first approach, which I initially thought of too, is something like this. You're like, okay, well, if we have two circles that are colliding, they look like this. We could just say, okay, the contact point is this one right here, right? So if we separate these, because remember, in real life, two shapes never actually interpenetrate. They never get to this point. And so that's the whole reason we're doing this. We're trying to simulate what it would be like if they had never penetrated in the first place because that's how real physics works and we're trying to simulate real physics. So if they had never penetrated in the first place, we would assume, okay, it looks like the contact point would be right here. And we can assume that because if we look at sort of the center of this circle and the center of this circle, and we drew a line between it, this would be the, the closest point, right? So we could say, okay, this is the contact point. And then it's really simple from there on forth. We would say, okay, this is the depth and this is the collision normal going this way because... Clearly, it's bouncing this way. If we refer to this circle as A and this one as B, then this would be the normal. But there's a problem with this approach, and that is uh, it doesn't account for the fact that both of these circles could be moving. What if this circle is moving this way and this circle is moving this way? Then what you're doing here is you're basically saying, okay, give this circle the entire amount of the impact because we're resolving it as if this is the collision point. So a better approach... Not the best approach, but a better approach would be to go in the middle. So we would go right here in the middle of the two, the inner penetration, and we would say this is the contact point. And then what we would end up doing is we move this circle out a little bit ways, this circle out a little bit of ways, so that they both get resolved an even amount. Now, ideally, you would do this according to their masses and have some sort of function that checks what their velocities were at the point of contact and everything to figure out exactly where this contact point is. But uh, you can get some pretty realistic results with just taking the midpoint between the two collisions. Then we would find the depth. Well, the depth is just going to be the point from here to here. And then the normal, of course, is just going to be this way. If we look at it as if this was circle A and this was circle B, it's going this way, the collision normal. And using these key facts, we can then create or resolve this collision, which we'll check out in a later episode. How do we get this information, though? It looks simple on the surface, and it's not that bad for circles. But let's take a look at a concrete example just to see. So I have the same two circles here, and we have a vector here. We'll call this the distance. So this is the distance between these circles, right? This is just a vector from circle A's position to circle B's position. And I'll just label these. If we take this distance vector and we take the sum of the radii, so the sum of the radii would just be circle A's radius plus circle B's radius. If we subtract that length from this length, then what we're left with is this length right here. 
right? And I hope you can see that uh, just because of the way that these are drawn, right? If we take this whole length and subtract the length that we have right here, we will be left with this length right here. And what is that? Well, that's the depth times two, right? Because we said technically we want the depth only to be half of that. So in order to get the true depth, what we could do is say, okay, well, the true depth is the sum of the radii, we'll call that SR, minus the distance, I'll just do D, times 0 0.5 or one half. So one half of that subtraction. And this would, of course, be the lengths of these vectors. So I guess I could do the bars around it to <laughs> indicate that, but it's getting really messy. Okay, so that's how we get the depth, which is almost all we need now. Now, we know that this is representative of just this small length, right? This number equals this length. Now, how do we get this point from this? Well, that's pretty easy, right? If we just take circle A's position, so this is circle A's position, and we add the radius, right, which is this whole length here, minus the length of the depth, so this is also the half depth, except in the direction of the collision normal, then what we get is we get this point here, okay? And let me say that just a little bit more clearly. First of all, how do we get the collision normal? Well, the collision normal we can see is literally pointing in the direction from A to B, right? This distance vector. So we can say the collision normal N is just equal to uh, the distance normalized. So uh, we would do like the distance unit vector. So that's the collision normal. This is helpful to us because now we can get uh, this point, which we'll just call X. It's the point of the contact point, right? So I guess C would be better. And so we can get C, which is also a vector, but it's also a point by doing the A's position. So P plus the radius minus the collision depth. So we would say, plus R1, which is A's radius, minus uh, depth times, this isn't a vector, this is a scalar, so we need to turn it into a vector since we're doing vector addition here. And so we would multiply by that collision normal because that would get us the correct direction, right? And so then this gives us a vector that looks like this, right? It's just a vector pointing from here to here. And when we add it to P, what we end up with is the actual point, the collision point, which is this dot right here. Okay, and then that is all the information we need. We have our contact point, we have our collision normal, and we have our depth. With that information, let's go code a collision manifold object and uh, code a feature to find the collision manifold for two circles. All right, so let's code this now. I'm going to go into our physics 2D package, and then I am going to go into our rigid body package, and we'll go and create a new class in here. We're gonna call this collision manifold. And the reason I'm putting it in rigid body is because when we think of collision manifolds, we're thinking strictly in terms of a rigid body. You can't have a collision manifold with particles because they're particles, they're single points, so there's no way you can have a collision normal or anything like that. So what does a collision manifold consist of? Remember, we just had a couple things, so we'll make a private vector 2f, the collision normal, or I'll just call it normal, um, the private vector 2f contact point. And remember, this can actually be a list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is actually a list, and we'll create an array list from this eventually. And we'll name that contact points because we could have multiple contact points, just not in the case of a circle versus circle collision detection. Okay, and then we'll have a private float, and this is just the depth or the collision depth, okay? And then we'll make a quick constructor. Uh, let's actually just do an alt enter on one of the variables and we'll say add constructor parameters. There we go. And then we can just select all those and we get our constructor, cool. I am liking these keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> so now we have a constructor. Let's also create some getters. Uh, we shouldn't need any setters because we should only be getting this value, right? This is like you make it once uh, using the constructor and then that's it. So we'll just provide a few getters. We might actually have a setter for contact points or like add contact point eventually. We'll see about that stuff. Okay, but this is all we need for this really. This is the collision manifold and it contains all the information we need. Now we're gonna create one more new class. We'll go into our rigid body package once again and I'm just gonna call this collisions. And this will contain all the code necessary to find those collision features. So 
Uh, we'll just start with the first one that I mentioned, which is a sphere versus a sphere, right? So, or I'm sorry, a circle versus a circle. Sphere versus sphere is literally the same thing, though. So technically, you're writing 3D physics code here, too. <laughs> So what we'll say is we'll say this is a static function that is called find collision features. And the collision features, of course, is the collision manifold that we're looking for. And we'll take in a circle, A, and a circle, B. And I'll hit Alt-Enter to import those from our primitives package. Now what we want to do is we want to initialize it with a collision manifold. So we'll have a manifold result equals a new collision manifold. And we will probably want an empty constructor for this as well. So I lied. We will need those getters and setters because uh, we could actually return a collision manifold that is empty. And so this, we will say normal equals new vector 2f. So it'll be a zero normal. Uh, contact points will have nothing, and then depth will equal zero. And we're going to add one more field up here. Private boolean is colliding. Now you may be saying, why would we have this is colliding field uh, if we're making a collision normal or a collision manifold? It, it should be colliding if we're using this, right? But technically, no. And we'll see that a little bit later on when we actually get into the depth of it. We could get false flags, uh, in which case this function will be called. It says, hey, find the collision features for uh, probably more complex shapes like this square and this square but they might not actually be colliding because it might have just flagged it in the broad phase collision detection. And so in that case, what we would want to do is we would want to return a collision manifold that says they aren't actually colliding. And so I'm going to actually leave this as is and we'll continue on with the method. Next, we need the uh, sum of the radii, right? Because we need that in order to calculate what values we need. So we'll say that's just A's radius plus B's radius. And then we'll get the distance, that distance vector. So the distance between A and B, which we'll just say is a new vector 2f, B dot get center dot sub A dot get center. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to do one check to make sure that they are colliding. So we'll say if the distance dot length squared minus some radii times some radii, so the sum of their radii squared is greater than zero. That means that we are not colliding, so we'll just return the result. So if we are not colliding, we don't want to continue on with this function because it does involve a square root, which can be expensive. So we'll say, okay, instead, just return the result early. They're not colliding. And since we just made that constructor with the is colliding equals false, then we know we'll get a result that says, hey, they're not colliding. Okay, next we'll get the depth because that's the next easiest thing to get. So we'll say that is equal to the absolute value of the distance length. So this is where the square root is coming in minus the sum of the radii times 0.5f. And remember, we multiply it by one half because uh, let's actually leave a comment for ourselves too. Multiply by 0.5 because we want to separate each circle the same amount. And then we'll put in a, a consider updating to factor in the momentum and velocity. Because technically those would change the collision depth. So we'll just leave a comment so that we know why we did that because I forgot why I did that when I was looking at my code. Now we can get the normal, right? So the normal or the collision normal is just equal to a new vector 2f. And we will say that is uh, our distance. Then we'll just say normal dot normalize to make sure that is actually a normal. And the reason we do the new vector 2f around this is because we want to make sure we're making a copy of that distance just because we may actually, I think we do use this again. But it's just good practice to do that too because you don't want to actually modify your data on accident. Okay. Now we're going to say float distance to point. This is the distance to the intersection point is equal to a's radius, so a dot get radius, minus the depth, right? Remember, this is just that distance that I was talking about, uh, the distance from a center to the contact point. I think it was just a black line in our case. And then we can get our contact from this. We can say, okay, and now the contact point is equal to a new vector 2f, and we'll say a dot get center dot add a new vector 2f, the normal. And I'm actually going to move this down to a new line so that we can see this. 
dot multiplied by the distance to the point, right? So what we're doing here is just some vector addition multiplication. We're saying a center plus the normal times the distance to the point, which gives us a vector in the direction of the contact normal. Uh, and this will give us the contact point, which we saw in the graph that we were drawing. Then what we'll do is we will just say, okay, uh, return new contact or collision manifold. And what will we pass in? We'll just pass in, well, okay, let's do this a little bit differently. I was debating whether I was gonna do this or not. So instead of having a constructor that takes in a list, cause that's kind of stupid, what we'll do is we'll just take in the normal and the depth, and then we'll set this to a new array list, right? And then what we'll do down here is we'll just have a public void add contact point, which takes in a vector 2f contact. We'll just say this dot uh, contact points dot add contact. All right, and yeah, we'll, we'll just add it in. So we'll literally add this object into this contact points list. And this will just make it a little bit nicer because uh, you don't want to construct a whole array list whenever you're doing something like this. So what we'll do now is we'll just say, okay, uh, the result, result equals a new collision manifold. And we'll pass in the normal and the depth. So we have the normal and we have the depth, if I can spell right. And then we'll just say result add contact point, And we will add in the contact point that we just solved for. Then we will just say return result. All right. And that should get us a collision manifold for two circles. Now we'll be able to use this collision manifold in the next episode when we go to begin resolving the collision. And collision resolution involves of two stages where first you separate the objects and then second you apply the appropriate change in velocity and due to impulse. Which we will go into much more greater depth in the next episodes about what those do exactly. That is it for this tutorial though. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode when we talk about separating the circles. Thanks guys.